Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kavita Verma. I'm the Director of Business Recruitment with the Maryland Department of Commerce. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedules today and for registering for our Maryland Manufacturing Webinar. I'm here with Steve Pennington, Managing Director for Business and Industry Sector Development, and with Chris Schock, who directs our Strategic Industries team, and Mark Vulcan, who heads up our tax credit program. As a bit of housekeeping, we encourage you to chime in with any questions as we go, and we'll also allow time at the end for any questions. On the right-hand sidebar, you will see an orange arrow that will allow you to ask questions. If your screen is minimized, you may need to expand your screen to see the arrow. Also, please note the webinar will be recorded and available shortly after this program. Now I will hand it over to Steve Pennington. Thanks, Kavita. Appreciate everybody coming on the call this afternoon. We're here to highlight a very lucrative new refundable tax credit that Maryland has tailored just for manufacturers. But before we jump into that, knowing that while incentives can be an important component of a deal, you know, without the right assets and ecosystem, they alone don't make for a successful location. To that end, we'll share a quick overview of manufacturing in Maryland and why a Maryland location makes sense for new manufacturing operations. You know, Maryland's been experiencing tremendous growth over the past two years. Since January 2015, Maryland's gained approximately 130,000 jobs. Our regulatory reform, workforce development programs are creating opportunities for both business owners and job seekers. You know, momentum for business attraction has been very strong, and new facilities announced all across all sectors and all areas of growth throughout the state. You know, we certainly like to uh, you know provide that opportunity for all of you to view that today, and hopefully uh, see your names added to this somewhere in the near future. Now I'm going to turn it over to some of our subject matter experts that I have with here me today. Um, I've got Chris Schock, who's our Senior Director of Strategic Industries. He's going to give you a brief overview of manufacturing in Maryland and some of the assets that make it a great location for manufacturers. Chris? Thanks, Steve. Maryland's traditional manufacturing industry includes a diverse blend of companies, some over 100 years strong. Maryland's manufacturing industry consists of nearly 4,000 business establishments produce, providing more than 100,000 jobs. The state hosts a variety of 21st century industries, including defense electronics, aeronautics, systems engineering, medical diagnostics, specialty chemicals, software, and aircraft engines. 60% of Maryland's manufacturers are advanced, producing high mix, low volume, high technology products. Using advanced materials, processes, and machinery, companies develop heavily engineered, customized products. Maryland ranks first in the percentage of professional and technical workers, providing manufacturers with a built-in base of skilled employees. Additionally, programs like WorkSmart are designed to deliver tailored workforce training solutions to the Maryland employers by tapping into the state's network of community colleges. Maryland's location offers prime access to federal customers and contractors. The balance of Maryland manufacturers includes the rapid, rapidly growing food industry, ranging from industry leaders such as McCormick, Purdue, and H&S Bakery, producing rolls for all, Maryland, all McDonald's east of the Mississippi, to innovative new producers like Firefly Farms Creamery, Flying Dog Brewery, and Sagamore Spirit. These companies thrive in Maryland due to direct access to a high-end demographic, access to 33% of the U.S. within a day, and access to raw materials. Spanning the continuum is W.R. Grace, established in the 1800s, the second longest operating chemical company in the United States and leading global supplier of catalysts and engineered materials with a sale of $1.6 billion in 2016. Companies such as Under Armour, Lion Brothers, and Stanley Black & Decker are pioneers for the local for local manufacturing movement. Moving products to market is enhanced by the state's central east coast location and excellent transportation infrastructure including a deep water port, two class one railroads, five major interstate highways, and access to four international airports. In addition to more jobs for Marylanders, funding programs like the Partnership for Workforce Quality, or PWQ, offer new and existing manufacturing businesses robust benefits for job creation and workforce training. Thanks, Chris. That certainly set a uh, great foundation for you know why manufacturing is important in Maryland and why we have the uh, More Jobs for Marylanders program. You know, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Vulcan, who's our program manager for tax credits, and he's going to tell you, you know, more about the uh, refundable tax credit, how it's designed, and specifically for manufacturers. 
you know, after learning about this, you know, we certainly hope you'll find it to be a lucrative question. We will have time for some Q&A at the end of this as well, but again, Mark. Thank you, Steve. Uh, the More Jobs for Marylanders tax credit program is one of Governor Hogan's top legislative priorities in 2017. It provides a new incentive program that encourages manufacturers to create jobs in the areas of Maryland that need it the most. The credit is available for both new and existing businesses. The tax incentive tied to this job creation is over a 10-year period. It encourages new investment in new equipment through accelerated and bonus depreciation by recoupling to the federal provisions 100% for <clears throat> manufacturers. It also strengthens Maryland's workforce by investing in workforce training programs. How does the more jobs for Marylanders work? Well, to create the jobs where Maryland needs them, the tax benefits are avail available as follows. New manufacturing businesses in tier one counties who create at least five new jobs may receive a 10-year income tax credit based on 5.75% of the qualified wages paid. You also receive a state real property tax exemption mm -hmm. and a sales and use tax refund for specific purchases related to the project. Finally, there's a waiver of all State Department of Assessment and Taxation filing fees. Existing manufacturing businesses can qualify for the 10-year wage credit if they create five jobs in a Tier 1 county and create 10 jobs in a Tier 2 county. The next slide will show where the Tier 2 and Tier 1 counties are. The targeted Tier 1 counties are Allegheny, Washington, Baltimore, Baltimore City, Prince George's, Dorchester, Somerset, and Worcester counties. <clears throat> to be qualified for the More Jobs for Marylanders, the manufacturer has to be certified as a qualified business by Commerce. They must also offer continuing job training and education benefits. They must notify the Department of Commerce before creating the new job, and the jobs must be created within 12 months of the notice of intent to Commerce. The qualified jobs are those jobs that are full-time, paying at least $11.10 per hour, and that are filled for 12 months. How do you apply for the Mer More Jobs for Marylanders? The first step is submit a notice of intent form. That form is located on our website at commerce.maryland.gov slash MJM. The second step is to complete an enrollment application for review. The following uh, those two uh, steps the applicant will file a preliminary tax credit application and a final tax credit application for certification where the tax credit will be quantified. As you can see, the steps are not complicated to qualify for the program, and we're happy to assist you throughout uh, the, those steps, and Kavita Verma is available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Mark, thank you for that overview. Uh, we've had a couple questions come in, and feel free to write in if you have uh, additional questions. I'll start with a few here that we just received. Uh, the first one I'll start with, Steve, perhaps you can take this. How did you determine the statewide geographic alignment for the eligible uh, regions in the state? Thanks, Avita. Yeah, this is always, uh, you know, one of the, you know, when you look at the, uh, you know, the location piece of it, that's always one of the toughest areas to figure out. But the areas were chosen based upon being historically strong areas for manufacturing in the state. And they were also areas that were designated development areas based upon certain economic factors. And you know, we never want to designate an area distressed, but certainly within every state, there are areas that always need a little bit more focus and a little bit more assistance in other areas of the state. So we looked at, you know, 
natural you know locations around the state that probably haven't seen some of the you know economic boon other areas have plus they have that traditional uh, manufacturing strength one area that was included though that's not a distressed area you may ask is Baltimore County this is a natural inclusion due to Trade Point Atlantic being in, located in Baltimore County that's the old Bethlehem steel site for those of you that are familiar with Maryland and it's one of the major industrial development sites on the East Coast that is perfectly suited for manufacturing so we wanted to make sure that Bethlehem steel Trade Point Atlantic was included in the benefits of the uh, Maryland you know, NDMJM program Great. Thank you, yep. Steve. Uh, a second question we just had come in. How, uh, Mark, this one perhaps you can answer. How is the value of the credit calculated? Thanks, Kavita. The calculation is very simple. You take the qualifying wage and you multiply it by 0.575 or 5 and 3 quarters percent for that position. As long as the company exceeds the minimum threshold established for the project, and they have met the minimum five or ten new jobs, depending upon the tier. Uh, they receive that tax credit for every year of the ten-year program. An example would be a $50,000 employee over the ten-year period would receive $28,750 in tax credit over the ten-year period. Great. Thank you. Uh, another question we just received, again, this is more related to the incentives, so Mark, perhaps you can answer this. Is the program stackable with other incentive programs from the state of Maryland? Uh, that is uh, indeed stackable. It's not what we call mutually exclusive. Uh, they can be added to more jobs for Marylanders credits on top of job creation, One Maryland, Enterprise Zone, and other targeted incentive programs that look at geographic areas and industries. We're glad to review each individual opportunity that's presented to us uh, to provide an estimate on the benefits that are available and package that together to do a model. Uh, Kavita will be happy to do any projections that you uh, pose to us. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, an uh, another question we just received. Thank you again all for your questions. What can Steve, can you define what is a new business under MJM? Sure, Kavita. Glad to. You know, obviously, uh, new businesses can be it can have a broad set of definitions, but we wanted to keep this one straightforward and re relatively simple. So, a new business is a business entity that is not located in the state at the time of its submission for its notice of intent to enroll in the program. So, again, very straightforward from that perspective. It's a company that comes to the state and has not been in operation prior to that. Great. Thank you, Steve. Another one we just received. Can jobs created in years 2 to 10 count towards the credit? Mark, could you answer that, please? Thank you. Yes, the answer is yes. As long as the minimum jobs are created, being 5 or 10 jobs, depending upon the tier of county that you're in, the additional jobs will be incentivized through the program. Okay, great. We received a couple other specific questions, and we can follow up with you after the webinar on those. Again, my contact information is up there. Please feel free to reach out to me via email or call me. We will have a recording as well on these questions and on our entire webinar. Um, and again, thank you for your time, uh, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Kavita. Yeah, one question that did come in, I'd like Mark to address quickly, is the qualification from the different sectors. You know, the NAICS code out there. Again, try to keep that relatively simple and straightforward. So, Mark, what are the NAICS codes that you know qualify? There's a lot, there's a broad set for manufacturing. So, what are those NAICS codes? Right. The uh, thanks, Steve. The uh, NAICS codes are very simple. They're in the classifications beginning with 31, 32, or 33. Those industries will qualify for the manufacturing tax credit and they're very broad from traditional manufacturing to advanced manufacturing to food processing those all fall in that area great thanks mark again as uh, managing director on behalf of the department here we appreciate everybody coming on the call today um, we uh, plan to do uh, more webinars like this on different topics and subjects as uh, you know that we see fit you know time from time to time but again as Kavita mentioned keep your questions coming in we're glad to get those we will uh, 
you know, submit, you know, our answers back to everybody. And uh, if we didn't get to you today, um, we're glad to, uh, you know, respond back or respond directly to Kavita. So thanks again. Appreciate the time and uh, look forward to meeting you face-to-face -face at some point.